uh, we got back from uh, Sydney, Australia. I'm telling you that that conference has really changed us so much. Uh, what I'm totally convinced is that we're going to have DCD again. I know this year we don't have it. We need a refreshing. We need the voice of the Spirit. The good news is that uh, the lineup of speakers we have, okay, they could be coming and they are very powerful in the Spirit. And I think we need to hear from God. Amen. Okay. Uh, now, again, I'm excited what God's going to be doing. But, you know, this actually early in the morning, uh, 1 to 2 a.m., I got up and, you know, I told God, you're worthy of my praise. How many of you think that God is worthy of our praise? Amen. But then God questioned me, am I worthy of your obedience? Well, that hit me. I never thought of it that way. Do you trust me enough? Am I trustworthy to you that you obey me? Well, when I, I, I just got that. I mean, I never heard of somebody asking me to, you know, uh, we heard about his worthy of praise, but are we worthy of his obedience? I mean, is he, you know, do we count him as the Lord of our lives that we obey him? You know, and, and, and that struck with me today. And today I, I, I felt that uh, we, we're going to do some revision here. Amen. Okay, you know, uh, what I mean by revision is maybe some of you, you know, uh, what you call that, have heard this message, but I just do not want you to turn off, okay? Amen. Because I'm, I'm going to do some revision. I'm, I'm going to talk about things that, that at Tabernacle or Joy, we, we do it quite often, but somehow or other because of this, the setting up of this auditorium. You know, uh, Bishop Willoughby is an extravagant praise and worship. You know, he believes in extravagant praise and worship. And, and, and for some of you, you are here you in this place. What is praise? In fact, you know, I don't want you to shut off right now because I was taught all the while that the word hallelujah means high praise to God and I was so wrong. And in fact, I want you to search, if you have your Bible, that type the word hallelujah. Can you find it in the scripture? Hallelujah. You know, for some of you Bible scholars, you realize that hallelujah is not in the scripture. It's a Hebrew form, okay, of two words. Okay? Everybody say praise the Lord. You know, in this conference, I was really ministered to it. And I want to turn to a few scriptures before we begin. Amen. Uh, maybe the PowerPoints can show the first slide. You know, I think it's First Peter chapter 2. Uh, you know, are you all there yet? Okay. First Peter. Okay, let me get my scripture out. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. It goes like this. But ye are a chosen generation. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. And a holy nation. The other neighbor and say, a peculiar people. Okay, here's the part. The outcome of this is very important. That you show, show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. So you know what it means? At the end of the day, we are a holy nation. We are a chosen group of people, but, but we are chosen for us to do one thing, to praise his name. Today, I want to talk to you about what praise can do. Amen. Psalms chapter 150, verse 1 and 6. If you are there, say amen. Okay, we're going to read the entire scripture. Why don't we just read, praise ye the Lord. Amen. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with timbre and dance. Praise Him with string instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise He the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. You know, for, for, for starters, when you see the word hallelujah, it's literally these two words, praise ye the Lord. 
There are two Hebrew words that says halu, uh, hale, yah, which is God's name. Praise God. That's where we get the word praise either. So when I take a sign and say hallelujah, you all need to say, right. It's, it's, it's just like when, when the psalmist will say hallelujah, you know what you all need to say? Praise God, not hallelujah. Because it's like a sign that says, praise ye the Lord. If you look at your modern translation, it says, praise the Lord, right? But that's not a correct translation. It's praise you the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Amen. When you come to the house of the Lord, there's one thing that you need to do is praise you the Lord. You cannot even use hallelujah if you're not in a group setting. That's why it's so important for us to gather every Sunday to remind ourselves, praise you, the Lord. Come on, everybody say, praise you, the Lord. Don't you ever say, praise you, the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so today I want to revise and help you understand why praise is such an important spiritual exercise. You know, I, I, I believe that, that we have prayer. I believe that thanksgiving is different from Praise, I believe in worship is different from praise, you know, but praise is, is equally as important, if not so important to get our thoughts right, to plow when you are feeling dry. You know, Hosea chapter 10 verse 11 says, Judah shall plow. When things are going rough, you need to take a moment and have a praise break. I mean, what do you mean? If you have a bad day, Thank God, just because you have a bad day, you're still a child of God. Amen. I'm glad that I'm still a child of God. A good day, you're still a child of God. A discouraged day, you're still a child of God. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about some things. What is praise and why do we praise? Amen. Amen. You know what? I, I realize that, that sometimes when I look at a certain individual... You know, some people are sick because the things that they say is always complaining or blaming. I realize you are sick. You need some vitamin P. Amen. You need to take a moment and step aside and say, praise ye the Lord. Sometimes all we need to tell somebody is this, hallelujah. Oh, you know, everybody say, praise ye the Lord. Let's, let's get creative. Oh, I exalt you, oh God. Oh, be magnified. Come on, everybody say praise. You know, don't just say, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, hallelujah means ask us to praise God. How about you praising God? <laughs> Amen. So I want us to get involved in this thing called praise. In fact, I believe in this. It's through this, this whole concept of praise that I got my hope. I still remember Brother Willoughby say this, Hey Tim, before you get the house, come on, let's dance for your house. And then he danced, you know, and then he danced. And because of that, I got my dream home. Amen. Amen. Some of you need to start praising God to create an atmosphere. Amen. So that you can pray. Can I share something with you before I go? Don't start off with your needs. Start off with praise. When you come into the house of the Lord, you all need to fast and say, don't talk anything back. This is the house of the Lord. You know, complaining is, is not appropriate for the house of the Lord because God says, praise God in His sanctuary. So you know what? For the next moment, we're going to step into the world of praise. Amen. And, and apply it into our lives and see what God can do. Everybody say, you know, someone say, Amen, or praise the Lord, I don't know. But shall we just leave our hands? Let's pray. Join together with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I, I know this is something that you've given me straight last night. So, Lord, help us, lead us, guide us, God. We want to live a life of praise. Amen. Because we are supposed to declare the praises to a brown people all around us, Lord. So again, God, I pray, Lord, that you receive our praise, that you receive, Lord, our adoration, oh God, our admiration, oh God. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus and all God's people, say Amen. You may be seated. You see, praise is not a difficult concept to understand for. It is part of our everyday lives. I, I realized something that I I, I, I I start to you know, start to look back you know, in, 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 in you know, as a parent. Sometimes you know, Chinese people don't like to praise your children, but 
Amen. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, you know I, 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 I never say, you know, if my son will come in and say, Dad, I got B. I don't say great effort. I will say, why you never get an A? Come on, everybody say amen. And, and, and even for the Asian culture, praise is not something that we do very often. Can I hear a big amen? Oh, we tend to see all the negative things and not the positive things. I mean, I, I've got to change that, you know, and, and especially, I, I mean, this was a big, big, big one for me. When I was training the dog and the trainer says, hey, how come you never validate your dog one? I say, huh? Must validate me? Gao le. I mean, dog le. Must I validate? Yeah, you must say something like, yes, good boy. So he knows that, that he's doing right. Even a dog needs praise. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking, oh Lord, I mean, I, I, I need to change my attitude. I need to look for things to praise. Amen. I mean, I, mean, I want to live a life of praise. I, I'm not talking about flat, flattery. That's very different. Flattery is lying. But if somebody does good, say thank you, acknowledge them. Amen. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. I mean, we, 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 we need to, to, to practice this habit of praising. Amen. We praise our children when we are pleased. We praise employees for a job well done. We praise dogs when they perform nice tricks. <laughs> so, so what's the definition of this word praise? The dictionary highlights its simplicity to commend, to applaud, to express approval of or admiration of, to exalt in words or in song, to magnify, to glorify. Amen. So that's why we sing. We don't sing just to give a few the time so that it can be two hours. Because God says that we need to praise God in His sanctuary. And we do that by singing. We do that by dancing. I know it's hard to dance there. Don't fall off the seat, but you know, it's just dance in such a way that you don't cause disruption. You know, and, and again, I still remember and I miss the time when, when in DCD, what we will say, the dance floor is open. Even, even brother uh, Stan Gleason, you know, he was going all around the world and says, you know, Tabernacle of Joy is very unique because the first time I ever hear, you know, in, in a DCD conference that he says, the dance floor is open. <laughs> Amen. You know, again, I, 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 I miss those times and I, and I don't want you to limit yourself, okay, to not praising God. You know, you can find, you can come out here, dance if you want to. You want to go on the side, but don't fall down, okay? You know, just be careful because this is, you know, a step that going down, you know, you dance and then you fall your step and you break your bone. You know, that's not wise. So, no, I, I also want you to notice that, that uh, praise is by, there's a bi-directional focus of praise. We praise God directly by exalting Him and expressing our admiration to Him. And we praise God indirectly by commenting Him or magnifying Him to others. I want to praise God for a moment. I want to testify about God's goodness. Amen. You know, I had a one photo opportunity to bring my mother to check up on Thursday. Right? Is it Thursday? Yes. And they did a scope and found nothing. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Amen. You know, she was complaining about pain and this and that and went there. And then the doctor says, nothing. Everything clear. Everybody say, praise the Lord. But yet at the same time, you know, I did tell them, I did tell my mother, the church has been praying for you. And she still has one more issue, her lungs still hurts. You know, and I say that I will let my church pray for you. And she was so excited and then she was saying that, hey, hey well, now where is your church service? Huh? <laughs> oh, that's a good sign when someone asks you where the church service is at. Amen. I, I'll probably send her the link to prayer meeting. Amen. <laughs> so that she can join along with us and pray. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. I say my God is a healer. Amen. Amen. If God has done something special for you, praise ye the Lord. And how can you praise Him? You testify of His goodness. I think sometimes we need to testify. Amen. You don't need to know a lot of things about the Bible, but I say God is good. <laughs> and why state the reason why God is good. Amen. I say God is good. Amen. And tell them the reason why God is good. And that is praising God horizontally. And your praise and your testimony can bring faith to somebody who's never known the goodness of God. 
and then we praise directly. You see, basically praise is preoccupied with who God is and what He has done. It focuses on both His incomparable character and His wondrous acts on behalf of His children. When God does something glorious for us, we live to, we love to lift up high praises, okay? And yet praise is not simply our thankful response to His provision. Praise is also very fitting even when we have no specific gift of God in mind. He is worthy to be praised solely for who He is. If you praise God because He's done something for you, that's equivalent to thanksgiving. Amen. But sometimes I praise the Lord because He is worthy of our praise. I don't need to have a relationship uh, with the artist and say, you know, wow, your picture very nice. Amen. And God has, has shown us His artistic world. Amen. Every day when you get up, you look at the sky. Wow. Why is the sky blue? Why is the clouds white? You know, I'm, I'm just amazed, you know, uh, in Australia, we went there in Sydney. Uh, the aircon never stops one. <laughs> Hey man, it's so good, brother Bong. You know, it's the weather is amazing. But then, at the twinkling, you know, and the next moment it can be hot. I mean, we all got to turn on the aircon and wait. <laughs> but 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 you see, God is so man, so incredible that sometimes we need to pause for a moment. Uh, you know what? He doesn't need to do anything. He's worthy of our praise. When you go out there, I, I start to be aware. I say, praise the Lord. Amen. You know, on Friday, on the way to buy something with Brother Charles, he can testify. My car broke down. What do you expect for an old car? You know, <laughs> car broke down in the middle of a road. Eh? You know, something broke down. And it was like, ah, in the middle of, uh, you know, in front of Funan Centre or somewhere there. You know, I mean, a lot of traffic. Eh? Then some more F1 there. Eh? Amen. So, so, you know, at the moment in time, I can blame the car. Oh, I say, or oh, you can start to say, praise ye the Lord. I started praising Him and say, at least all of us are safe. Amen. Come on, everybody say, praise the Lord. I, 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 how many of you agree? If, if that's a discipline that I want, to, I want to discipline myself, is this exercise called praise ye the Lord. Amen. You see, one of the distinct uh, distinctive of praise it, it's, it is extroverted in nature amen it's categorized by celebration exhilaration and expressed through singing shouting speaking for playing of musical instrument dancing or external forms in the most fundamental sense praise should, could be defined as raising much to do about God I mean, on this weekend, you know, I mean, last weekend, we, I was talking to uh, Jaden, uh, uh, Samantha's older son. And he was in service. He was like, not really getting into it. You know, he, he thinks that God will move only when you cry. How many of you think that way? Some people think that way. And then he was kind of reserved. And I asked him the question, do you know the meaning of enthusiastic? Yeah. It means excitement. It means full of exhilaration, you know, and all those things. Yeah, it comes from two words. And tears. Amen. That when I think about God, it excites me. Hello? You're, you're, you're very... Are you awake? Hello? I mean... When, when I think about the goodness of God, you know, is, is, that, 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 is it the pointer sisters? I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. I mean, that's why we should be living as Christians because we are empowered, we are safe, we are redeemed, we have a future, not just for this world, but the next world. In fact, if this world is bad, get ready for the next world because the next world, God's going to reward us. Amen. You know, I, I had a talk with my mother. You know, she's 82 years old. And I tell you, are you ready, mom? It's going to be exciting, you know? You're going to see Jesus. Eh? You're, going to see, you're going to see Papa. Eh? My goodness, I think he's interviewing Abraham right now. I mean, he's talking to Moses about the burning bush. Because the kingdom of God is from the Old Testament. New. I mean, death is not a bad thing. I'm looking forward to death, you know? I'm not afraid of death. 
you are only afraid of death if you are not ready. But I'm ready. The only thing is that I still want to hold my grandchildren. <laughs> a lot. I'll pause for a moment. Let me see that one first. Huh? Uh, you know, and, 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 and like what I say that, that, that folks, when, when we think about God, we got to get excited. Some of us are still sleeping. Hello, wake up. <laughs> and the reason why we don't get blessed, because we don't get involved in praise. I tell you, when we get involved in praise, I start to sing, you know, like, you know, just move a little bit, just do whatever you do and just get involved in the spirit and think about the goodness of God and just get involved. I don't know what kind of stance, but you just get involved. Something will happen in the spirit. You will plow through prayerlessness. You will plow through. Suddenly the word of God becomes exciting to you. There is liberty. Amen. So there are times when I take a moment and just say, praise God. Amen. Are you with me? You know, I, I, let, me, let me share with you something. You don't go straight away with needs. You, you, you pray, our Father, again, it's our Father. Uh, hello? You see, corporate worship is so important. Thank you for that overwhelming response. Coming to church is important. Because the word church is the word assembly. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. By the way, for those that are watching online, zoom in here. <laughs> Hello? Are you awake? Are you in your pajamas? That's fine. But you need to be in the house of the Lord so you can feel the presence of God. Because at the end of the day, it's the assembly of the saints coming together. I need to lay hands. I need to impart. You need to impart. I need to impart. Hello, are you there? Don't turn me off, huh? I love you. That's why you need to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. Have you noticed that in the scripture many times you say, let us. Amen. There's, there's a lot of plural form. Our Father in heaven. Amen. Hello be thy name. We start off with praise. We start out with understanding who he is and, and remember that he is our creator. Amen. And, and it's got to be extroverted. Amen. I, I know some people think that I'm an extroverted personality, but truthfully to tell you, I'm an introverted personality. I draw strength when I'm alone. You know, sometimes, you know, uh, I can tell you sometimes my quota of people is enough already. <laughs> you know, coming, hey, pastor, I want to talk to you. I tell them, uh, <laughs> burn out already. <laughs> Fry already. <laughs> and I will tell you this, uh, I, I probably need to meet another time with you because otherwise I counsel you wrong. <laughs> Amen. Okay. That's why we need to get out there. And sometimes it's not just about talking about your problems. Oh, come magnify the Lord with me. Oh, come, let me tell you about the goodness of the Lord. Oh, come, let's praise the Lord with me. When you come together, the difference within coming together in a, in a small group setting, meeting is about one thing. Are we exalting Him? I say, my God can meet all our needs. I say again, you know, if all Bible study don't point to the greatness of God, then who? This greatness of your problem? Amen. Come on. I want to come to a place where people are praising God because it's contagious. And in the study of the Old Testament, especially the Psalms, clearly reveals that the Hebrew people were very emotional and vocal in their praises. Amen. And adoration before their God. May it not be testified of us that we were too modern, too sophisticated to rival their enthusiasm about God. We have a glorious and dynamic God. He deserves our energetic praise. Can we stand to our feet for a moment? Let's clap our hands unto the Lord. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. Just clap your hands. Don't just go through the motion. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is in this place. Lord, we give you honor. You are the special guest of honor today. Lord, we acknowledge you reign. We acknowledge you are supreme. You take preeminence, God, today. You are the center of our focus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout out to God with a voice of triumph.
Amen. You may be seated. You know, he who has merely contemplated about the wonders of God have not entered into praise. Meditation is not praise. Am I saying that meditation is a good thing? Yes, it is, but it's not qualified as praise. Sometimes I just got to let it out. I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I have to let it out. I got to praise. Come on, you got to just let it out. Amen. I mean, you think about it, not enough. You got to praise. Ni hen hao. Ni hen wei ta. You know, try all kinds of language to describe the greatness of God. Amen. I mean, just let it out. Clap your hands. Sometimes, you know, people think that you're crazy, but we are not doing it for people. In fact, the world out there, F1 right now is going on. Everybody go, oh, they go, vroom, oh, vroom. I was like, huh? You pay so much to vroom. But God is always there with you. When you are going to the bad season, He's with you. He's a faithful God. He's a God that heals you. He's a God that can touch you. Amen. If you just turn on and put on the garment of praise. Amen. Because my God is able. I don't need to tell Him what I need. As I praise Him, things are broken. Amen. Oh, I, ever since I come back, God has been opening doors like nobody's business. Bam, 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 bam. I say, this is you. And I'm flowing, God. I'm flowing with all your blessings. Amen. I'm just flowing, be- meeting with people and, and God's getting me, you know, in fact, uh, uh, meeting me, uh, meet all kinds of people, musicians especially. And, and, and my son gave me that thought. Dad, why don't we pray all the talented people into the house of the Lord? I like Never thought of that. Why do we need to start from ground bottom? <laughs> and I begin to look out. And then when you start to operate in praise, amen. Oh my goodness, it's a whole different world because, oh, this is potential praise the Lord. You know what I purposely do? I go and say, oh, my name is Timothy and he's Charles. What's your name? Fabian. And I started to know their name. And then you start to be aware of people Amen. Come on, everybody. Say praise the Lord. Amen. Praise is a powerful thing. I say again, praise will tear down walls. Praise will do all kinds of things. Praise begins with a mindset upon God, but then those thoughts must be put into action, into qualified as praise. Oh, there are some people that says, you know, uh, this is my way of praising God. Hear me now. I understand. I'm getting old. I got pain here. I got pain there. You know, it's not like before. When, when I see some of you young guys, you can just jump like that. I used to be able to jump as high as you. But when I jump, ouch. Ouch. I mean, I'm different, but, but at the same time, I will want to explore the different dimensions of praise. There's the clapping on hands. There is dancing. Amen. I still remember the time when God told me, oh, you can dance for the world. Why don't you dance for me? Huh? I mean, I mean, you used to look like a fool. You look like Mr. Robot. You do all the robot. You know, break dancing or robot. <laughs> you know, for, but I'm not asking you to do robot for Jesus. Huh? Okay, please. But, 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 but you, you don't care what people think. The people do, you just follow like a monkey. I say, huh? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, I, I start off with this. Hey, not so bad. Uh, everybody can do this. Uh, okay, at least I clap. Uh. But it's not about at least you clap. Don't start with the lowest common denominator. Start with the highest common denominator. What you can do. People always start with the lowest common. Why don't we start with the highest common? You know, when people live for God, they live, you know, have you ever heard, because I've said this before, I want you to hear very clear, clearly right now because I speak. Some people tell me, oh, I don't want to be so holy. La. Huh? As it is, because I don't want to be so holy. Why you don't want to be so holy when the scripture says, be holy for I am holy? You're saying, I don't want to be God. I, I, hello? You know what you're saying? You never want to live your life with the minimum requirement. Oh Lord, help me. You live your life. If somebody say, hey, you know what? I, I want to marry you, uh, but you know, you can have me only 70 weeks. The other two weeks, you know what I'll do? I'll break his fingers. You know, if somebody will come to Abby, I'll break his fingers. Don't ever talk to me like that about my children. If somebody always asks you to live lesser than what God wants you, break the rules, break all protocols, be careful with that individual. Protocols are to protect relationships. Amen. 
I always tell young people, you don't have no clue. When you go down there, mess around with other girls, then at the end of the day, we want to break you up into small group. Then we got to say this, oh, got history. This one got history. That one got history. How to put them in a group? They see each other, they get resentful, they leave the church. You think it's fun, but it breaks my heart all the time. If you don't stay within the boundaries and you cross and defrauded somebody in the opposite gender, and then who's going to pick up the pieces? And then every Sunday, come here, see your face, cannot worship God. And if you are the worship leader, you stand here and say, wow, that guy hypocrite. <laughs> Break my heart. And that's why we got to be very careful. You know, we don't want to be a stumbling block. Are, are you with me, parents? Say amen. <laughs> you know what? I want the house to be a safe place. Amen. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. It's not about dumb rules and regulations. It's about protecting the body of Christ. It's about protecting you. I got more things better than do than to just give you rules. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Listen to your care group leader. Listen to your youth leaders. Don't make it difficult for them. But let me say this. There, there, you know what? You've got to step out of just my way of praising God. If you will start to dance. I still remember the time, you know, in, in Sydney, there was this guy. Scary. He suddenly come out. You know, dancing. I don't know how he do it. Like. He's wearing jogging shoes. I mean, he was like running... I like, I, I see him, I also get tired. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, and then he will come. Uh, you remember that? Uh, yeah. I like, and he looks like my age. Eh? I'm very paisay. Eh? You know, he can dance until like that, you know. And, 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 and that stirs me up. You know, it's not a just about those people that like to dance, maybe want to... Stay in contemplation. You know, there are things where the Bible says, be still and know that He is God. <laughs> you know, not every time all dancing. Come on, everybody say, praise the Lord. You know, there, I, I'm trying to tell you there are different dimensions. There are times where God says, clap your hands, lift up your shirt, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout means shout. Leh. Shout doesn't mean, hallelujah. Shout means shout. Leh. You know, you used to sing the song, Shout to the victory, shout set, set free, shout, Woo! you know, everybody go, Woo! I don't know, you know, I like shout to the victory, you know, is it, right? you know, we just think now, nowadays, I shout, y'all wake up, hey, what's going on? <laughs> hey, what's going on? Over already at the church, ha, hallelujah. You know, we are not just asking you to go through the motion, we are saying that there's victory in the house of the Lord. Amen. I, everybody say praise God. The Bible, the, 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 the Psalms, Psalms, the book of Psalms 68 verse 8, exalt. Let the sound of His praise be heard. Amen. And, and Isaiah chapter 40 verse 9, the prophet cried out, Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up and not be afraid. Again, there are both vocal and non-vocal forms of praise. But whatever the form is, praise is demonstrated and others aware that praise is taking place. Imagine with me, I look at my wife. Anybody know I'm praising him? Huh? That's not praise. Praise is like, you are so beautiful today. I'm not just saying this for the sake of saying it, really. I mean, you, you, you got to say something. Some of us, Look at God. <laughs> at least clap lah. At least do something to let your voice out lah. Yeah. Some of us, I mean, I mean, God here said lah. I'm not saying, but but there's something to the crying out. There's something to intensity that God loves. Eh? Because He talks about your passion. Let me say this, you know, uh, uh, if, if, you know, uh, 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 when my child walk down and graduate, get a certificate, I'll be like the crazy father. Yeah! My child. Yeah! That shows, you know what, I mean, the older folks, I mean, the younger folks will say, Dad, chill, chill, chill. Don't embarrass me. But don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. But here's the truth of the matter. I am so proud and excited. That's why I let my voice out. When my wife go get that degree or that diploma, that certificate, I was standing, yeah! I'm not afraid to show forth 
my approval and my admiration to her heart label. And likewise, in the presence of the King, amen, we lift up our voices, we shout, we praise Him, we let our voices out, amen. And it can be, you know, again, let me say this, doesn't matter whether you can sing or don't sing. You know how many times when I look at the lyrics of the word, I don't know what they are saying. I, uh, uh, I really don't know. So many words nowadays. Or nowadays the word, oh, 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 ah, 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 ee, ee. You know, uh, uh, then is there a scripture for it? Yeah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. <laughs> That's what I said. Make a joyful noise. Some people ask me, Pastor, Pastor, you know, the ooh, ooh, oh, oh, not biblical, like to biblical. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. How to make a joyful noise? Oh, 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 ah, ah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just a joyful noise that you are born again. Amen. Everybody say, Praise the Lord. I mean, come on, let's get excited with God. Amen. Oh, again, you know, again, some people say this, oh, my days are bad, how? So let's talk about David. You know, David talks about this all the time when he's down and out. You know, he says this, my soul is downcast within me. And then he talked to himself, why are you downcast, oh my soul? Why are you disturbed within me? And then he goes on and say this in Psalms chapter 42, verse 5 and 6. He says, for I will yet praise him. You know, yeah, you're going through all those things. And let me say this, there are two times that you need to praise God. Only two times when I feel like it and when I don't. Praise God. Amen. Come on, lift your voice. Say, praise God. Today is going to be a hard day. Praise the Lord because I am not alone. He will never leave me nor forsake. Try that for a moment. And it was admit faith. Amen. That you know who your God is. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody say praise God. You know, again, Psalms chapter 40, 54 verse 6. I will praise your name, O God, O Lord, for it is good. Glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So, someone asked me a very good question. Why praise God? Huh? Is God some kind of egoistic God that looks from heaven? You must praise me. Praise me. Praise me. If not, I'm very angry with you. See, God knows that we, we need to praise Him. It's a commandment. Praise you, the Lord. And you need to expect a response. Say, be magnified. Be blessed, O oh God. Why is it important? Because praise leads your eyes from the battle to the victory. Let me say this again. Praise leave your eyes from the battle to the victory. For Christ is already victor. And you have the victor in your heart. And you might have His victory in your life. Amen. Come on, everybody say, praise the Lord. Amen. Again, have you ever noticed as I praise Him, as I make time to give Him a, a sacrifice of praise, that, that God after that will multiply my faith. Amen. When I begin to praise Him. Amen. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Prayer meeting, some of you like dragging yourself to prayer meeting. And then we start to praise Him. Amen. We don't pray for needs. If you talk about needs, there's no liberty. Because you know what? You are not magnified a lot. You haven't come to a place of faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So what we do? We start off with praise. I, I got a praise. I got a praise. And I got to let it out. I got a praise. Then after that, you start to warm up. You know, come on. Everybody say warm up. Amen. You start to start to remind yourself that God is good. God has never lived me. And you remind yourself over the promises of God over your life. You remind yourself of the testimonies that God has been glorious. God has healed my son. God has healed my father. And you start to say, I, I come so far. Amen. I'm going to praise him. Amen. I've come so far that, that you know what? I, I'm not alone. And you remind yourself. You remind all the sermons that you heard. All the feelings that you felt in a service. And then suddenly, bam! There is breakthrough. Judah shall plow. Amen. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Amen. Again, praise lift your eyes from the battle to the victory. For Christ is already the victor. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 8. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. And he left that is not put under him, but now we do not yet see all things put under him. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22, and he put all things under his feet and gave 
Him to be head over all things to the church. You know, praise in warfare is not telling God what to do, but rather when we believing that He knows what's the best possible means to win the battle, we are not focusing on our enemy or our warfare, but we are transferring the battle into a mighty man of war. And victory is a sure thing. Amen. It is His battle. Amen. Praise does not flatter God to incur His favour. It enthrones Him back on His throne where He belongs. Amen. You know, let me say this again. In service, the most place that He attacks, right, is our praise and worship. Because He doesn't want you to touch the hem of His garment. Amen. You know what, in fact, I, I'm going to make an exclusive decision. I think children should sit us here in this church, in this place to see us praise God. And some of you parents got to be stricter than to your kids. Amen. Taiyi and Elvin loved them. We went out and I was like super nanny. Amen. Mary was such a sweet girl. She learned how to praise God. Have you seen that? I mean, we should not limit children coming down the house and praise God. We should not. We should get in them, get them involved and say, praise God. You see everybody cheering. And she was so sweet. She was just praising God. I mean, when you see a child praise God, it makes you want to praise God. <laughs> Amen. You still want to get involved with them. <laughs> hey, but don't play with the kid. Uh, praise God. Huh? <laughs> you know, but, 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 but I, I, I feel that, 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 you know, in a sanctuary, you should not limit children. In fact, it was, I wanted to make a deal. Once the fifth week, children all come here and I'll preach to the children also. They need to learn how to sit in the house of the Lord and respect the presence of God. Let me share something with you. You know, you will know the child suddenly switch when you put them in an atmosphere like this. I remember the time when, when, when Adora felt Something of the Lord. The first time in her life, she said, I'm scared. And Sister Nancy was, 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 was wise enough. She said, you know what she's feeling? She's feeling the presence of God that she's never felt before. And once they begin to feel the presence of God, they begin to respond to God. Amen. I say children can feel the presence of God. If we start early, they will be filled with the Holy Ghost and less drama. Come on, everybody say amen. Uh, what they need is the Holy Ghost. A full dose of the Holy Ghost here. And then after that, say, oh, it's like that one. Uh, you know, and then sometimes you need your brothers and sisters to come pray together with you because sometimes you're wondering, is this the Holy Ghost or fake one? I still remember when a child received the Holy Ghost, I asked Brother Willoughby, you got to pray because I see too much of his nonsense already. So Brother Willoughby, please pray for my child to receive. And then he prayed, he received the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. In fact, so many battles will be won if we just bring our children to the presence of God. Amen. Let me remind you again, God does not need our praise. He's commanding us to praise because it is for our benefit. Amen. Come on, everybody say praise God. When we praise Him, you lift your eyes from the battle to the victory. When we come before Him in praise and worship, this is not a good time to focus on yourself. Some introspective is good, but we can be so engrossed in introspective, being so introspective that we neglect the priority of blessing the Lord. We disqualify ourselves that we are not worthy. Let me give you an example. There's one time, I always check myself. I come to the presence of God, I got to check myself, I got to check myself. Then God told me this, there's only one lawgiver and one judge, and you are not it. Let the Holy Spirit convict you. We, our eyes are always to keep Him as the Lord. Sometimes we start to in, be introspective to ourselves. We disqualify ourselves from the presence of God when God never disqualifies us. The Bible says that we can come now boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. The Bible says come. You know, but sometimes, you know, if we become too introspective, we disqualify ourselves and we don't touch the presence of God. But because in His presence, that He can cleanse us. Ask any father and mother. Listen very carefully. Ask any father and mother. Can a child at that age clean themselves? Can't. You always need the father. 
And God is the cleansing. His blood cleanses us. Not our good works cleanses us. His blood cleanses us. So when we lift Him up, when we start to praise Him, something happens, He begins to cleanse you. How many of you felt the cleansing power of God many times in worship? When you start to worship Him, He starts to cleanse your mind. He starts to sanitize your mind because in His presence, there is fullness of joy. Then when we praise Him, He, 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 he inhabits the praises of His people that He doesn't mean... It, suddenly you be more aware of God being around you. And when God is, the devil will not try to touch you. That's why praise is a good spiritual weapon. You know, that, that, that when I praise Him, you know, when God steps in, the devil runs. Amen. Everybody say, praise God. It is our individual responsibility to praise Him. Amen. Praise can cause walls to fall, ask Joshua. Praise can stop the fury of the fire, ask the three Hebrew boys. Praise can quench the appetite of a lion, ask Daniel. There is power in praise. Amen. I say again, there is power in praise. So let's go back to the book of Psalms, chapter 150. That's just the beginning. Now I preach. <laughs> That's just that's, that's revision. Okay, it says this, Praise ye the Lord. What do we do in the sanctuary? Praise ye the Lord. And when you search in the concordance, there's no hallelujah. Have you noticed that? There is no hallelujah. And how many of you have been taught, and maybe I thought it and I'm sorry, <laughs> hallelujah means high praise to God. It's not. Hallelujah literally means this word, praise ye the Lord. That means you, there has got to be a response. Praise you, the Lord. <laughs> Amen. It's trying to tell you that it's a command. Hey, the last chapter of the book of Psalms is going to end with praise. And likewise, in the last, when we go back to the book of Revelation, it's going to end with praise. You know, I, I, I don't know about you, but uh, there's, there's a song that we sing, Endless Hallelujah. Y'all remember the song? Do you know what? If you are not comfortable with praise, then you're not comfortable with heaven. You don't know what we're doing in heaven? We will declare His praises. Amen. The endless hallelujah. Okay? Everybody say, praise ye the Lord. Again, you know, you will never find the word hallelujah, the English term hallelujah in the Bible. But when you look at this word, praise ye the Lord, it comes from two words. Hallelujah, which originates Hebrew verb hala. When you look at this word in the strong, exhaustive concordance, it will describe the following. Make boast, self-celebrate, command, deal, make foolishly glory, give life, and be make. And the word, ja, original word as well, Hebrew word means the sacred name of God. So when you combine the word, it literally means praise ja. Okay, praise God. It appears in the Old Testament book of Psalms and the New Testament book of Revelation chapter 19. Each expression means praise e Yah, which is the name of God. Amen. So let's look at Psalms 104 verse 35. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul, and praise ye the Lord. That is where the word hallelujah comes from. Psalms 106 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, which is hallelujah again. Praise ye the Lord in Psalms uh, 112 verse 1. Psalms 113 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. You see, in my opinion, when the word hallelujah is used, it's best interpreted and understood. You all must praise Yahweh. When I say hallelujah, very good. Some of you are getting. It's like, you know, you know, you know, in the live studio where they take they have people that take a sign, clap. You know? So when the worship leader say, Hallelujah! Very good, you're getting it. <laughs> no, no, don't shout hallelujah back to me. <laughs> that means you say, if you shout back hallelujah, I say, praise the Lord. Uh, no, I not praise the Lord. You see. My tongue is twisted. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
There's got to be a change there. Amen. There's got to be a change. Okay, come on. I'll praise you, the Lord. Say something good about the Lord. He's great and greatly to be praised. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's mighty. He's victorious. If every one of us will start to talk like that in our small groups, what will happen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Oh, everybody get ready. Don't call me. Don't call me. Don't call me. <laughs> I mean, it change our language a little bit because, you know, it makes us find words and in order to find words, you got to know God. Yeah. I cannot praise Him if I don't know His name. You know, it makes me start to find things that are wrong. Oh, yo, pastor going to ask me to pray. I better read books about prayer. <laughs> you know, a prayer meeting. You know, I, I know some of them say, don't call me, don't call me, don't call me, don't call me, don't call me. You know, every time pray because you're scared. Oh, yo, oh, yo, don't know what to say, don't know what to say. Because you know what? It forces us into a learning. When you get someone engaged, something happens. They start to search for themselves. That's why when he says hallelujah, you're going to search the names of God. He is Jehovah Rohi, my healer. Jehovah Shalom, he's my peace. Oh, I praise you for my peace. Amen. You start to think about those things. Instead of talking about all the negative things that you don't have, you start to praise him. Let me tell you something. You need to understand yourself for a moment. Christianity is like going to see a doctor. You know, very simple. Listen very carefully to me. What comes out from your tongue? You know, the doctors will say, now it's the modern thing. Lah. You know, it's the, but last time, they say, open your mouth. I'm going to put the thermometer under your tongue. Right? Now, this thing, no fun. Last time, you put down there, then you play around with the thermometer. I still remember, brrr, as a kid, just rolling around my tongue and then drop it. Oops, sorry. <laughs> then try again. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 last time was the mercury thermometer. Right? And likewise, Sometimes, right, when you hear somebody, what words come out of their mouth tells their spirit. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Sometimes you can tell them already, they are not right because of things coming out of their mouth. Just hear them talk. Everything on negative one. Then you need to say for a moment and take a sign and say, Hallelujah! Then he will say, Blessed be the name of God. Don't talk as if God is dead, Lee. Don't talk as if God doesn't know that you're going to a trial, Lee. You know what? I'll tell you something of people. I'm not using this as a formula, first of all. I'm, I'm very, very, very careful. But sometimes the way you are is because of the meditation of your heart that is not right. Lee. There's still a rebellious streak within you, Lee. I mean, when God tells you to do something you don't want to do, and then you want to do your own thing, after, you know, all these things, and then you are stuck with this situation. And then God don't love me, people don't love me, oh, no, no, don't love me. Oh, no. no, first of all, you're just disobedient. That's why you're in the mess that you are. If you are living a spirit-filled life, you will have peace, you will have joy. You have righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Show one. But if you struggle with your peace, something is wrong, your relationship issues. And you know what's your issue? You never enthrone him. Because he, he's not worthy of your obedience. That's what it is. Oh, Lord, help me. Don't blame God. When there is blame, when there's accusation, when there's all kinds of stuff, you need to stop for a moment and check your life, you know, because it's never one thing. It's never one thing. Trust me, it's never one thing. It's somewhere down the road. You know, there's a difference between a behaviorist and a trainer. Let me repeat that. There's a difference between a behaviorist and a trainer. Trainer can get you to do the thing that they want you to do without telling you the root problem. A behaviorist, right, in a, animal, in a dog trainer world, okay, they will look and see why you behave the way you behave. So that when I deal with the root problem like fear, then I settle it. Don't have to be repeated already. If it's a reactive dog, then I have to give him safe environment. Build him up. Some of us also like that. We are behavior problem. And then, I don't want to talk about discipline because there's a root problem, there's a stronghold that needs to be totally demolished by the gospel. Amen. And then when you put everything aside, I'm not saying that praise will, will be something that's automatic, leh, but it starts you with the right footing of thinking the right thoughts. Amen. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. You know, again, you know, we, 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 we all need to praise God where? In the sanctuary. 
Amen. Everybody say in the sanctuary. Where we meet mainly to praise is the Lord's day, is the assembly of the saints. We preach, we teach, we sing, we give praise. Amen. In a historical speaking, you know, Israel are a group of people that gathers for festivity. Amen. You know, I don't have time, but, but one of my starting messages that I'm going to preach, uh, the importance of the Lord's day. Amen. It's important for us because it's always on the eighth day miracles happen. If you study scriptures, it always is on the eighth day. Let's give you an example. You know, Thomas was not there on Sunday. You know, Thomas was not there. He missed it. I said, Until I put my finger uh, at his side, then I believe that God. But then, uh, the next week, uh, eight days later, uh, the then Jesus showed up. <laughs> I don't know why, but, but the, the, the Pentecost is always on the first day of the week. There's something about Sunday that we need to consecrate. Hello? Amen. 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 That we got to make room. You know, I, 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 parents, don't feel guilty dragging your kids somehow. Don't feel, oh, I want to sleep. You sleep on my lap. Because there's something. You don't want to miss it. There may be a healing for somebody. There may be a touch. I can remember and clearly now how Sunday was special to me. There are two times when I did not go on a Sunday service. Two times only. Number one, COVID. When my wife had COVID. Popian. Second time, when I had sleep this, I cannot walk. Brother Willoughby has taught me, whatever it is, run to the house. You never know what can happen in a service. You never know that God can touch you. Amen. You never know. And I strive to make that as consistent as I can. I try to impart that to my children when they are young. I try because at the end of the day, I want them to feel uncomfortable not coming on a Sunday service because it has become a memory muscle to them. Amen. You know, I, 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 it just like some of you, some of you are more, more tenacious that they, 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 they go to, 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 to tuition centre. Then come to the house of the Lord. Hello? That, that degree is more important. You can get a degree and lose your salvation. What's the point? You know, I'll be honest with you. Before I go, I went down on my knees and I begged God that my children see you high and lift that up. Before I die. I want to see them having that glorious experience because when you take over, he must increase, I decrease. Amen. And that's my prayer. Praise God in this sanctuary. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. Come on, praise God in this sanctuary. Amen. Again, you know, when I say hallelujah, you all say? Amen. One more time. Hey, can you all get more creative a little bit? Or not? Uh, hallelujah. It's still the same. <laughs> you know, try. You know, it makes you... You know what? Can we expand our praise language? Amen. Can we? Okay. Then again, you know, uh, uh, number two. We praise Him for His mighty acts in verse two. Amen. Why? What He has done. Amen. Amen. Psalms 146, verse 5 and 9, reading from the New King James Version. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps true forever, who executes just justice for the oppressed who gives food to the hungry the Lord gives freedom to the prisoner the Lord opened the eyes of the blind the Lord raised those who are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous, the Lord watches over the strangers, he relieves the fatherless and the widows but the way of the wicked he turns upside down happy is he are you happy that you are a child of God then look happy some of us don't look happy. He's my father. He's my laupe. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have God my father. Amen. 
then you know what? In this whole scripture, you can start to plan. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he had me on his mind somewhere down the line. And you start from praying from Genesis. Oh, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without void. And then suddenly, the Spirit of the Lord moved. Boom. In the midst of a chaos, Father, you move. In the midst of an impossible situation in darkness, you move. You are the light of the world. And then he says, let there be light. Bam! Revelation. I finally saw the light of who you are. I finally, God will walk into someone's room. Amen. And touch. God can go inside someone's room and just revelation and understanding will come. I say, oh my God, my, my Lord. Just like this person by the name of Saul, the apostle Paul. He was in the road of Damascus when God reveals himself. Do you not know that God wants to reveal himself? And when God reveals himself to you, you will never be the same ever again. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. You see, you start to talk about this whole psalm, talking about he created the heavens and the earth, then he sets people free. I was blind, but now I was, you know, I see. You know, if you were to follow this template of praise, my goodness, one hour also not enough. Huh? Amen. He created the universe. He sustained it. He is the one who delivered us from death and sin and hell. He is the one who is our saviour. He has saved us and redeemed us. He is the one who continues to protect us. He keeps His covenant with us and He's continued to give us life. Hallelujah. That's who I serve. A heavenly Father that loves me that nothing is impossible with Him. Amen. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. And then he goes on to say, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Why? Who he is. He is great and greatly to be praised. Come on. You have no clue how, God, how big God is. He's beyond time. I was just telling Frederick, Kendrick, sorry, Kendrick. I'm so glad that there's more to this life. There's also the other life. Because some of us had it not fair in this life. But let me tell you something. My God knows how to reward. You may go through in your life, you didn't start off with, with good parents, you didn't start off with anything, and then you were just persecuted all the time. But I have a good news for you. Amen. All those things will end, but I thank God for the next life. Amen. I thank God that He is a rewarder. I thank God that maybe I have sickness, but in the next life, I will not have sickness. Amen. I thank God maybe my voice not very good, but the next one, maybe I sound better than Michael Jackson. I'm just kidding. You know, but whatever it is, the battle, the next life is always better. This is not heaven. So stop making this heaven. If this is heaven, you don't want to go out there. That's why people love their lives so much. They don't want to die. When the time comes, adios, amigos. <laughs> Amen. Adios, amigos. When God calls me back, I will say, my dear sister here, I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Amen. Come on, everybody say praise God. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. You know what? We are the people that you know what? We are the people that are the afterlife people. <laughs> this is not the life. Some people just want to be prosperous. You can be prosperous in this life, but are you prosperous in the next life? You know, I always have conversation with my firstborn. I say this, hey, you know, you invest all these things, but have you invested in the kingdom of God? Because you're going to stand before God, eh? And God's going to answer, ask you this question. Do you not know that God's going to answer? Have you been steward of the blessings that I give to you? Whew. And it's an individual thing. It's an individual thing. That means all of us, you cannot rely on your husband's faith. You cannot rely on your sister's faith. You cannot rely on your brother's faith. You cannot rely on my faith. All of us got to answer to God how we use our time. Amen. Praise God. And then goes on to say, praise Him with the sound of trumpet, strings, percussion, wind, gather up everything. Praise Him with the lute, harp. Praise Him with the timbre and dance. Praise Him with the string instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. That's why we got cymbals here. Look like cymbals, but not really electronic cymbals. And, you know, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So that's why we do this every Sunday. Because as I touch God... 
everything will be settled and the preaching of the Word of God should lift you up. Not lift your kingdom up, but lift His kingdom up. Because your kingdom will end. His kingdom will never end. And to keep your eyes on and fixed on the one that is able to do it. Amen. Are you with me here today? Come on, raise your hand, say hallelujah. You know, I wish I had time, but now it's 11.40. I got another sermon that I want to do. I say what praise can produce. I'm going to leave this to next week. Okay, First Chronicles, I'm going to leave your hanging. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Because some, okay, pastor, what are some benefits of praise? You know, and then here we go. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 1. The sons of Judah were Paris, Hezron, Kamel, Hur, and Shoba. Not Soba, huh? Shoba. I know when I say Sioba, everybody, oh, my God, Sioba. You know, uh, Shoba. You see, praise will beget somebody. Amen. I, I'm saying this, there is so much blessing. When you understand the concept behind it, because I felt it, I felt every dimension, the blessings of it all. So why should I praise God? Because number one, He is worthy of, His, of our praise. And the first thing that we need to do as we come into the house of the Lord is praise God in the sanctuary. That's why we sing. That's why we put so much effort in leading you into praise. Amen. We're going to do better, but nevertheless, if the system is down, if everything is down, if multi-tracks is out, we still can praise Him because you know what? He's the melody of my heart. He's the rhythm of my soul. And you know what? I want my children to see. Listen. I want to hand down a legacy that daddy was a praiser. When daddy talks about God, hey man, he comes alive. Hey man, hey man, come on. You know what? Uh, there are two subjects right now that gets my interest. Dog training and God. I mean, you, funny is that people in Australia, Sydney, bring their dog to me to train. They heard I was a dog trainer, so they bring the dog and I train the dog and I have disciples of dog trainers right now. Uh, <laughs> You know, then we have a group check, apostolic dog trainers, hallelujah. You know, I, I, you, you, you know, so you can see I'm at, oh, when you talk about that, oh, my Lord, oh, you know, uh, but, 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 but that's a good thing because you know what, I'm passionate about it, but also passionate about God. I'm also passionate about God because you know what, I want to show it in my praise. I want my children to catch the fire. You know, I, I can't expect my children to be praisers if I don't praise God. Amen. Come on, everybody say amen. And this generation needs people to demonstrate what praises look like. In the good days, in the bad days. In the bad days, for yet I will still praise Him. I lift my voice to you, Almighty God, because I know this is not the end. You're going to show yourself strong. They need to see you Praise, you need to bring a sacrifice of praise. What do you mean by a sacrifice of praise? Because sometimes it is hard to lift up holy hands and you lift it up. Amen. Because it is hard. Because things are not going okay in the home. Some of you are here. You lift up holy hands. It is not, life is tough. But nevertheless, you lift up holy hands and that's your sacrifice. And people, if it is, you know what, you are not a true disciple. If everything goes your way, then you are a follower. Even the bad days, I will follow him. <laughs> Even the days where I don't seem to be blessed, he has redeemed me. He has saved me. There was a story of Joseph, you know, in the Bible. And I borrowed this from, from this, this uh, preacher that I heard, you know. Uh, you know, in the Bible, there were many secret disciples. They were from the Sanhedrin. They were Jewish Pharisees, teachers, rabbis. One of those people was Nicodemus. You all remember Nicodemus? Yeah. You know, he come by night. You know, the, uh, John 3 verse 5, favorite. he come by night, secret disciples. And there was this guy by the name of Joseph. Amen. He was also a secret disciple. He begged. Finally, he couldn't take it anymore. When they wanted to take Jesus' body and throw in the rubbish where all the dogs can tear away the body of Jesus. He couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't take it anymore. You are not going to do the Lord's body like that. After all, He has done for me. 
He couldn't stand it anymore. He, he says this, he went to Pilate and begged for the body. That's what the scriptures say. I say, I am tired of living a secret. I will praise my God. And he causes his tomb. Amen. The cost of a buried tomb. He paid his price. You know what it costs? It causes his, his, his connections because he was ostracized by the Jewish community. He may be ostracized by his own children because he says, you are not going to do my Jesus that way. You are not going to do my Jesus by just throwing him in the rubbish. He is my Lord. He is my God. You are not going to do him this way. And I hope that you guys, when you come into the house of the Lord, you need to have some kind of righteous indignation within you. I say, you are not going to do Jesus the way you sing this song. That's why sometimes the worship leader and pastor will say, you can do better than that. Come on, don't look at your issues. Come on, lift him up. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Amen. You're not going to do it. Guess then what happened? Another disciple came along. Then you read the first views verse later, Nicodemus follow Joseph. <laughs> Amen. You know what? Sometimes all it takes is, I, I got a praise. Nobody else is praising God, never mind. I, I got a praise. I got a praise. And I got to let it out. I got a praise. Then you see someone next to you and I start to move. Ah! Uh, and then everybody will start and he erupts in praise because you know what? Praise is a function of a will. It's not about feeling because he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of my obedience. Even dancing is not my deal, I will dance. Shouting is not my deal, I will do it because nobody is going to, God has been so good to me. Amen. God has been going good to me and I'm going to move myself. I'm going to move myself. Tired, never mind. You all remember the good old days? Listen, that we shout until we got no voice in DCD. You all remember what Muslim, uh, what, what, what you call Pipa Kao? Uh? Honey lemon. Everybody ate honey lemon. You know, all the praise singers all go like, I got no voice. I got no voice. To worship. You see, that's the way that we pour ourselves out as praise. You know, my mother tell me, Yeah, I'm not going yeah, you don't understand. I, I, God has been so good to me. I will take out my personality. What that is normal for me, the introverted personality, become an extroverted. Brother Stone King says, when I receive the Holy Ghost, God changed me from an introverted personality into an extroverted personality. Because I got to let, I was called out of darkness into His marvelous light. I will declare His praises. You know, at the end of the day, Sister Weir, when my songs, when I die, let the songs be happy one. Like Sister Willoughby told me this, I want songs to be happy. You know, you know, uh, don't use the old songs that the mellow, mellow one. You know, like there are some songs that we always sing as a pattern one. Like, Kan li e chiu, kan wai chiu, kan wai chiu. What kan li e chiu diao la? You know, it's inside. Like, I mean, I, 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 I want something more exciting, you know. You know, come on, huh? I want people to be happy for me. Like. I, I, ne I don't die to go to a worse place. Eh? Oh, can you chew? I, I, I don't want that. I, I want you to be happy. I want you to understand this is the example that we should be living. Yes. That when I die, I, I got a praise. You know what I want us to do? Are we going to take a moment to have a praise break? Okay, I hope you all don't mind. This type of thing cannot talk one. You must do one. Huh? I mean, come on, come on. How many of you ready to have a Holy Ghost party? Amen. I'm ready to... Why don't we stand to our feet? Amen. Uh, you know what? You know, if you need a miracle... Uh, uh, you know what? I know there are people that need some miracles here today. If you step out and just say, God, you are a miracle worker and I know it. And I'm going to praise you for that. Amen. If you need a miracle, if you need something... I'm, I, I, God already knows what you need. All I need you to do is to declare His greatness. Amen. The musicians... I'm going to lead us. Maybe I shall sing some song. Amen. <laughs> Come on, you people. Are you ready to praise God? 
Wow, this is my, my dream of becoming a worship leader. <laughs> Come on, turn to your neighbor and say hallelujah. Amen. Okay. One, two, three, go. I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to let it out. I got to praise. Let's praise God together. I, I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to let it out. I got to praise. I got to praise. I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to let it out. I got to praise. I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to let it out. I got to No matter what your weapon is 
Yes, I want you to know that our we God is for us in this place. No matter what your weapon is, I want you to know that I win. No matter what your weapon is, I want you to know that I win. I win. No matter what your weapon is, no matter what your weapon is, I want you to know that I win. I win.
chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people that will declare the praises. Hallelujah. I declare your praises today. If you need a miracle today, lift up your hands. We're going to pray. Come on, if you need a miracle today, Father, by the authority given to me in the Word of God, Father, it is written because we are the children of the Most High. Father, by your stripes and we are healed. Father, again, God, the promises of God is Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release healing. I release healing right now in Jesus' name. Come on, receive your miracle today. Hallelujah. Cancer be gone right now in Jesus' name. I speak to wombs be open right now in Jesus' name. I speak, oh God, to broken families to be restored totally in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's give him praise for a moment right now he's done it he's done it he's done it hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus turn to your neighbor and say praise the Lord amen you know I, I, I get very encouraged you know every time you know when we end the service and I gave a word last week I, I think that last last week I gave a word about jobs remember that I have people testifying, they call me up, they say, Pastor, you won't believe it, God has provided. Come on, everybody say, praise God. Let me say this again. Listen very careful for those of you that have been praying for your loved ones. Speak praise. God's going to do it. I say again, speak praise. Be careful how you speak the next few days. Come on, everybody say, praise the Lord. Come on, I say, praise the Lord. Amen. I say again, watch your mouth. It can release blessings. God has done something today. Some of you, God has already touched. The miracle is coming. Look at your neighbor and say, my miracle is coming. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let's give him praise one more time. Let's love him. I want to you. I want you to start to prophesy to somebody next to you. Say, it's going to be okay. God's got this. You don't have to worry. Come on, don't be anxious. Come on, start to prophesy to them. It's going to happen. Amen. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. Just stay on the course. Amen. Just stay on His wheel. Amen. Let's clap our hands one more time in Jesus' name. You know, I believe here in this room, before we go, that you have authority. I can feel faith in this house. But you know what I want you to do? I want you to do something with that faith. Today, what I want you to do before we leave, I want you to impart to each other. Amen. I want you to consider that God has given you gifts within you. All the goodness of God it is within you. I want you to impart that to each other today. I want you to find somebody to pray right now. Amen. I, again, I don't want you to think about doubt. I want you to impart all the goodness of God, the grace of God, the mercies of God. I want you to transmit to each other right now before we leave. There is good in all of us. Amen. And Father, by the authority, come on, in the name of Jesus. All that you have given to me, God. All that you have given to me, God. I transmit that right now to my brothers and my sisters to Today, let them have their breakthrough. Let them have their consecration. Let them have their encounter with you today in the name of Jesus. Come on, receive it in Jesus' name. Receive my blessing in Jesus' name. Come on, people. Come on, transmit faith. Transmit faith right now. Never be the same again. Never be the same. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Liberty. 
I speak liberty. I speak liberty right now. In Jesus' name. I speak liberty. I speak a demolishing of strongholds. Father, right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Harakasana. Jesus name in Jesus name yes my for my victory yes for my miracle yes I say yes for healing yes for salvation yes Jesus name breakthrough father in Jesus name now praise the Lord together right now just lift up holy hands do whatever you need to do just praise him amen some of you need to give him a sacrifice of praise some of you maybe you are in a state that is kind of uncertain but I want you to praise him I want you to lift him up amen he will ground you he will show you his miracles walls are coming down miracles are coming hallelujah thank you father Come on, just leave your voice and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn to somebody and we're going to dismiss. I promise you, I promise you. You need to speak to each other because this is biblical. You know that? What we're doing is very biblical. Because most of the time in the sanctuary, people have to speak praise to each other. It is not normal for me just to speak like that, you know. You have to speak to each other. That's what when you read the scripture, it talks about speaking praise, speaking prophetic utterance. Amen. And you know what? I'm not trying to hype you up. Don't you ever say, I'm not trying to hype you up. You know, I want you to speak to them. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Amen. This is what the Jewish people did when they come together. They speak to each other in Psalms. They speak to each other in prophetic prayers. They speak to each other because if we don't speak to each other, someone will speak. And I do not want the devil to speak to me. I do not want the accuser of the brethren to speak. I do not want the voice of the world. I want the voice of my brother. I want the voice of God's voice. Amen. I want to hear his voice. He who the sun set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Shake hands, be friendly, and go home praising the Lord. <laughs>